loneliness is a very strong feeling and it's a feeling that most of us have experienced more than once myself included uh, I've been in a, in a place where I felt alone so alone and it's so painful that it makes you cry sometimes because you just feel like you're literally all alone in this world and it's one of the worst feelings out there I've been through it I know what it feels like so it's like feeling hungry right your body tells you when it needs food by feeling hungry so when it needs food and it needs nutrition you start getting hungry and you say hey I'm hungry and you go and you get some food because your body is telling you that it needs food and that's what it needs to survive and keep going that's a good way of thinking about it it's the exact same way when it comes to loneliness when you are when you are feeling alone and you're feeling lonely what your body is essentially telling you your body and your mind is essentially telling you is that you need more social contact Do me a favor, before we get started, go ahead and smash that subscribe button for me to become part of the May Day family, and also smash that like button. I wanted to get into loneliness because there was a point in my life where I was feeling very alone, and I was feeling very lonely. And the thing about feeling lonely and being lonely is a lot of people don't really know what the true meaning of being lonely is. It's not necessarily that you don't have enough friends or you don't have enough people around you. As a matter of fact, you could be surrounded by thousands of people and still feel like you're alone and you're the only one on this planet, on this earth. You could still be the loneliest person alive or feel like you're the loneliest person alive despite having thousands of people around you and having thousands of people that support you care about you or love you well the reason for that is because what it means to be lonely is not that it's not necessarily that there aren't other people around us or that we don't know anyone or that we don't have any friends was what it means to be lonely is that we lack that deeper connection with someone and what I mean by we lack that deeper connection with someone is that what really makes us feel connected and supported and accepted is a particular connection that we have with individuals or that we're capable of having with individuals so essentially it's not about how many people you physically have around you it's about the connection and the strength of the connection with each of those individuals or any individual that might be in your life when that connection isn't strong enough then what happens is you don't feel accepted and you don't feel understood and you feel out of place and a lot of times you even feel judged or unsafe so you lack that connection that stronger connection which essentially then leaves you feeling lonely and alone it just leaves you feeling alone so you could be in a room with thousands of people that know you and seem to like you and you still feel like you are by yourself on the planet on this planet earth feeling connected with someone true deep innate connection is what drives understanding support and love so it only stands to reason that the opposite thereof the lack of that connection is what drives loneliness and the feeling that we are alone on planet earth even though we might physically have a lot of people around us that surround us and that is the true meaning of loneliness. That's what it really truly means to be lonely. A key part of loneliness is also feeling rejected, feeling like you're not being accepted. And that can be one of the most challenging things or parts of actually building a connection with someone is feeling like you are not being accepted or uh, the 
kind of the mirroring of that feeling as though you are being rejected. And that is a key part of loneliness. Feeling lonely is not in itself a mental health problem, but they are very strongly linked and very strongly correlated. Having a mental health problem can and usually drastically increases the chances that you are feeling lonely and you're feeling alone. And in retrospect, feeling lonely and feeling alone can drastically increase the negative impact that that has on your mental health overall. If you feel alone and you feel lonely and you are lonely, then that's not necessarily going to have a positive impact on your mental health overall. As a matter of fact, it, it stands to reason that it would have a very, very negative impact on your mental health. It can be very, very destructive to you and your mental state if you feel like you're alone and you feel like no one understands, accepts, and supports you. So those two, although they're not the same and they don't necessarily correlate, they are and tend to have fairly strong links to each other. And a lot of times, especially in my line of work, I find that those two are, are hand in hand. People usually describe feeling lonely as one of two things. So the first is they maybe are just not around enough people on a daily basis or on a weekly basis. So if you're not around enough people physically, just the presence of people, then there's a good chance that you start feeling alone and you start feeling lonely. So it's not necessarily the lack thereof of a connection. It's more that you are a little bit uh, more on the introverted side and even further, you don't or are not putting yourself in situations that allow you to be surrounded by a lot of people often. So that in itself can really cause a sense and a feeling of being lonely and feeling lonely. And the second reason why people often report themselves as being or feeling lonely is what we discussed a little bit earlier, which is the lack of connection with other people. So in this case, you could be in a room filled with people that know you, you could be the most famous person on earth, and you still feel as though you are so alone and you're alone on this earth and there's no one that understands, accepts, and supports you. And that is because there is a lack of connection there and there's you don't have strong connections with other individuals and so in retrospect that leaves you feeling as though you are alone and it leaves you with a strong sense of loneliness deciding which is the case for you is the first step in actually feeling better and actually starting to make a difference in your life and starting to work towards a solution that will work for you so the first step is actually deciding which one of these reasons it might be why you're feeling lonely or why you're feeling alone uh, in your life. And that's the very first step. So we need to sit back and evaluate what type of people are in our lives and what type of connections we have with those people and just kind of decide on whether those are strong connections to us, whether we feel supported and decide on what the reason might be why we are feeling so alone or feeling so lonely. Your body is telling you that what you need is more social contact. So the first step to deciding how to go about bringing that into your life in the most effective way that works for you is deciding what the reason for that is and going back to one of those two reasons that we discussed earlier. So it's just like feeling hungry, right? Um, a good analogy between the two uh, your body is telling you that hey you need more social contact you're not having enough of it and so now you have to decide on how to proceed in in bringing more of that into your life and essentially making uh, making you a happier person and a more well-rounded person overall humans are social beings we're social creatures we weren't created to live or be alone and so therefore we actually can't do it successfully we just can't right we need other people so when your body is 
telling you or when you're feeling lonely, that's essentially your body and your mind telling you that you need more social interaction. It's especially difficult in today's day and age where technology is pretty much all that we know, especially for millennials. Uh, technology, the internet, we're at home most of the time because most of what we would have had to get out of the house to do, we can now do from the comforts of our own home. Even just something as simple as paying the bill, we can just get online, get on our phone and get the bills paid. We don't even have to go to the bank and do or suffer through that interact suffer through that interaction. So the simplest way to ease into uh, reducing that feeling of loneliness and making your life a, a happier, more well-rounded life as far as your social interactions go is to increase your connection with people. That's really the only solution for loneliness. It's really the only cure for it. So you, by increasing your connection with people, you are working towards resolving that challenge that you have when it comes to you feeling the way that you do or feeling alone. So you want to increase and work on increasing your connection with people or form a deeper connection with people. So if your reason is the first reason, which is you're simply not around enough people and you need to be around more people, then we need to work on increasing your connection with people and increasing the frequency at which you surround yourself with people. And if the reason is the second, which is the feeling of connection that you have with particular individuals isn't strong enough, then we need to work on opening up, you opening up and actually building deeper connections with individuals, actually working on building those deeper connections that will give you the type of connection that you need in order to feel a lot more fulfilled in your life, especially when it comes to your social interactions. Now, for someone who's used to being alone or who kind of gets frightened by the idea of being around a lot of people or gets anxious by the idea of being around a lot of people or being vulnerable, you don't have to do it all at once. You can ease into it. It's something that you can ease into. So is there a particular hobby that you like? Are there particular classes or groups that you can be a part of? You can ease into it by just showing up and chilling, sitting there, just being around those people. So you can ease into it just by showing up and being there. You don't have to feel forced to have a full-blown conversation the first time that you are in a group setting or anything like that. So just ease into it one step at a time. Volunteering is also a really great way to feel better about yourself. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, if you volunteer and you're doing something good, in essence, the reward for that, one of the greatest rewards for that is how you feel for doing that. So that's another really great way to not only feel better about yourself, but also build rapport and connection with other people and meet new people as well. Open up. Open up to your family, open up to your friends if you're feeling lonely and you're feeling alone. Open up to the people that are supposed to be the closest to you. And if you feel like you can't open up to your family or you feel like you can't open up to your friends, then make or work on building new relationships and new connections in which you are making yourself more vulnerable and making yourself a little bit more open. Uh, in order to build those stronger connections, in order to be able to open up a lot more. So opening up is going to be essential in your process to feeling and becoming a little bit less lonely, but I will prompt you to open up and have those conversations with people. You don't have to go through it alone when you feel like there's no one there for you and you're by yourself. It, it's a lot it's a lot to take in so express yourself try your best to open up if you don't want to open up to family or there there are no friends you want to open up to then go to the bar go to like a hangout spot and just sit there and chill see and work on meeting new people that perhaps you can uh, build that stronger connection with and start opening up with them now it's easier said than done i definitely understand so like I said, one step at a time, 
little baby steps at a time. I deeply appreciate your time today. Thank you for joining me, uh, the weirdest counselor alive, most likely. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe. Smash that subscribe button. Smash that like button for me. Become a part of the May Day family. Let me know you've subscribed so I can reply to any comments that you might have. And I'm looking forward to actually talking to you guys a lot more. So if you smash that subscribe button, smash that like button, leave me a comment. Let me reply. Let me talk to you. Let me get to know you. And uh, we will connect in the next video. I love you guys as always. Bye-bye.